Okay, so uh, title of my talk is Learning Deep Neural Networks from Limited <laughs> Examples. Okay, so uh, as we already know that uh, deep learning is one of the most successful machine learning methods. However, the deep learning in general requires a huge amount of the annotated data, and the uh, annotation cost is very, very expensive, as we know. So the uh, many researchers are now attacking this uh, problem. Uh, so our team is also attacking uh, this problem to obtain the high quality uh, deep neural networks from the limited data. Uh, so uh, uh, in this talk, so, uh, I will uh, introduce the, uh, some recent developments uh, about topic to obtain the uh, high quality deep neural network from limited data. Uh, my talks uh, include uh, two topics. Uh, one is uh, uh, the learning method for supervised learning from limited data. Uh, the other topic is uh, unsupervised domain adaptation uh, using the classifier discrepancy. Okay. Then uh, I'd like to uh, move on to the first topic. Uh, first topic is uh, between class uh, learning. Uh, this is a novel method uh, for uh, learning the uh, uh, supervised setting. And uh, uh, this topic uh, will be presented in the iClear this year and uh, CBQR this year. So if you want to uh, know the details about this topic, so please check our papers. Uh, before I explain uh, what uh, is uh, between class learning, uh, I'd like to uh, briefly uh, review the standard supervised learning. The first step of the uh, supervised learning is to select uh, one example from the training data. Then we train the model to output one for the corresponding class of the input data and zeros for the other classes. Okay? Uh, in this example, so we pick up the one example from the uh, dog class and uh, we pick the x1, this is an uh, example from the dog class. Then we input this uh, example into the network, this model. Then we teach the uh, model, uh, this uh, is a dog, and this is not a cat, and nor a bird. Okay, this is a standard running method. Uh, our proposed method is called the uh, between class running. Uh, this is uh, different from the standard running method. Uh, first step of this uh, method is uh, to select the uh, two training examples from the different classes, then uh, to mix uh, uh, those examples with uh, random ratio. Then we train the model to output the mixing ratio and the mixing classes. Okay, in this example, so we pick the one example from the uh, dog class, X1, and then we pick up the uh, one example from the cat category, this X2. Then uh, we mix the uh, a dog example and the cat example with the uh, random ratio. So in this uh, example, so we mix uh, the uh, 0.7 dog and 0.3 cat. Then we generate the mixed example. Then we input the mixed example into the network. Then uh, we teach uh, the model. Uh, this is a mixture example of the 0.7 dog and 0.3 cat. Okay, so this is uh, that's all. This is a uh, between cross running method, um, and this is very very simple, but different from the standard running method. The merit of the uh, between cross running is to generate uh, infinite training data from the limited data. So this is very useful, so we can generate uh, infinite data, so we can uh, train the larger network than the uh, standard running method. Uh, as a merit of the between class learning is to run the more discriminative feature space than the standard learning method. Uh, the, the second merit is not intuitive uh, for us, uh, but I will explain the reason why the be between, learning, uh, between, between class learning uh, uh, to run the more discriminative feature space uh, than the standard learning uh, later in my talk. Okay, so. Uh, one of the uh, important applications of the between class learning is uh, sound recognition. Uh, since uh, if a dog uh, barks bow wow and a cat says meow meow in simultaneously, so we can recognize uh, this, uh, there is a cat and there, there is a dog uh, from only the uh, environment of sound. Okay, so uh, it means that uh, so it is very reasonable to use a mixed uh, example to run the uh, network, uh, but uh, in order to uh, adapt the human perception of the sounds, we have to consider the sound pressure level uh, when mixing the two environmental sounds. Okay, uh, this graph shows the result of the sound recognition. 
And uh, there are uh, uh, various uh, uh, models of the sound recognition. And there is a uh, uh, various data set. We use a three data set of the uh, environmental uh, recognition, EST50 and EST10 and urban sound 8K. Uh, this uh, score is uh, um, uh, error rate of the uh, standard running. And this is error rate from the VC running. So this is ours. And this is uh, error rate. So the uh, lower value uh, means uh, uh, better uh, classification accuracy. So if we apply the standard running method to the uh, embed, and uh, we got the error rate of 29.2. Then we apply the BC running method. This is our method to the uh, embed. So we got the 24.1 uh, error rate. So we got the 5% uh, gain over the standard uh, running. Uh, embed version 2 is a larger version of the embed, uh, this original embed. Then we apply the standard running method to the embed version 2. So we got the error rate of 21.2%. Then we apply the BC running. So we got the error rate of the 15.1. Okay, we got the uh, six pa point over the standard line. Then uh, this is the error rate of the human performance. And uh, human performance, error rate of human performance is the 18.7. So uh, uh, our method with the embedded version two, so obtain the better performance than the human level in this uh, environment uh, data set. So we can observe that and uh, we can improve the recognition performance for any sound networks if we apply BC running to the network. Then uh, next, another application of the between cross running is uh, image recognition. However, uh, the mixing image is not intuitive for us. So because uh, this is a dog image, this is a cat image, uh, this is a, a mixture of 0 0.5 dog and 0 0.5 cat. It's hard to understand. Uh, however, so if we consider the image uh, as a two-dimensional two web, web forms, uh, we can handle the image uh, just like uh, a sound recognition using the between class running. And uh, this is a between class uh, uh, BC plus uh, method. So this is an improvement version of the between class running, and uh, uh, in which the, uh, we use the only the web components, web components uh, of the image to uh, mix the two image from the different classes. And uh, this uh, slide shows the result of the CIFA 10 and the CIFA 100. Uh, those are uh, uh, various uh, network uh, of the uh, object recognition. And uh, this is a result of the CIFA 10, and this is a result of the CIFA 100. Uh, this is a score from the standard running, and this is a score from the PC running, and this is a score of the BC plus running. Okay, so uh, on the uh, CIFAR 10 data set, uh, if we apply the BC running or the BC plus running, uh, we uh, can improve the uh, classification performance over the standard network. Okay, so uh, if we apply the BC plus uh, running method to the shake shake regularization networks, we get a 2.26 uh, error rate. I think this is an um, uh, excellent result. Okay, so if uh, we apply the uh, BC running method to the uh, ResNet 101, uh, network and uh, on the ImageNet 1K. So ImageNet 1K is uh, uh, one of the most large data set uh, for the uh, object classification. Then uh, we, uh, when we apply the BC running to this network, so we uh, got uh, uh, 1%, uh, around 1% gain in the top one error uh, on the ImageNet 1K. So this means that uh, BC running is uh, uh, effective for the uh, uh, large uh, data set. Okay. Now, so I'd like to explain the why the BC learning works well. Okay. Uh, there are two feature spaces, left feature space and uh, right feature space. The difference uh, between uh, those uh, feature space is that uh, the uh, within variance, uh, this is a, a class A distribution, this is a class B distribution. The difference between the two uh, feature space uh, is that the uh, within class uh, variance is larger than the, that of the uh, right feature space. They also, uh, the uh, between cross uh, between cross uh, variance is uh, smaller than that of the right feature space. Uh, so uh, this uh, right feature space is more discriminative uh, uh, than the uh, left feature space in terms of the features criterion. Okay. Uh, when using the standard running, when using the standard running, so uh, this situation is acceptable. Because 
those uh, class A and class B distributions are linearly separable. Okay? However, so in the PC learning, we generate a mixed class between the class A and the class B. And this is a mixed uh, distribution of the class A and the class B. So we can see that there's an overlap between the class A and the mixed distribution. Okay? So in this situation, in this situation, there's an overlap among the distribution. The loss of the BC learning uh, becomes large. So this situation is not acceptable for the bit between class learning. In the uh, right feature space, uh, this is a mixture of the uh, class A and the class B. We can see that this is a mixture uh, class distribution. We can see that there's uh, no overlap among the distributions. So the uh, loss of the bit, uh, between class learning uh, becomes small. Uh, so this, this situation is acceptable for the between class learning. So this means that the uh, uh, between class learning so encourage the feature space that in which the uh, class distributions are more dis discriminative than the standard learning. This is uh, one reason why the BC learning is have the uh, more discriminative power. Uh, this is uh, another reason why the BC uh, between class learning is uh, better than the standard learning. Okay, so um, uh, in the classification problem, uh, the distribution must be uncorrelated uh, because the uh, training signal is discrete. Okay, so there are two uh, feature spaces, left feature space and the right feature space. Okay, uh, in uh, the left uh, feature space, uh, uh, those uh, class distributions are correlated. Uh, on the other hand, in the right feature space, uh, class distributions are uncorrelated. Okay? So uh, this is a distribution class A and a distribution class B and distribution class C. Uh, in the standard learning method, uh, this situation is acceptable. That because the, those uh, class distributions are separable, and uh, standard learning doesn't consider the correlation of the uh, class distributions. Uh, however, in the between class learning, between class learning, uh, we generate the intermediate class between the class A and the class B, the here, okay? So we can see here, okay? The mixing class A and B, then uh, this area uh, maybe uh, is uh, classified into the class C. So this means that, so if we mix the dog and the cat, okay? Then this uh, dog and the cat class is classified above. Yeah, but it's not uh, intuitive. So in this situation, so uh, loss of the between class learning becomes large. So this situation is not acceptable for the between class learning. In the right uh, feature space, uh, we, uh, in the between class learning, uh, we generate uh, intermediate class like this, okay, here. Then uh, there's no overlap uh, to the uh, 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 decision uh, region of the class B, class C. Uh, so the uh, loss of the between class learning uh, becomes small. So this is acceptable for the uh, between class learning. So this means that the uh, uh, between class learning prefers the feature space in which the uh, class uh, distributions are uncorrelated. Okay, this is another reason why the between class learning is has a uh, uh, more discriminative power over the uh, standard line. So this is a visualization of the uh, activation of the 10th layer of the 11 layers of conversion neural network, uh, which is trained on the CIFA 10. So this is, uh, figure is from the standard learning, and this figure is uh, from the between class learning. Uh, this is a, a score of the Fisher criterion here, and uh, we can observe that uh, uh, distribution uh, from the between class learning are more compact uh, than that those of the standard learning and also the uh, uh, distribution from the uh, between class learning uh, spherical, okay? Then also, we can observe that the uh, square of the Fisher criterion is uh, larger than the square of the Fisher criterion from the standard learning. So that we can conclude that the uh, between class learning uh, uh, can uh, generate a more discriminative feature space than the standard learning. Then uh, I'd like to uh, move on to the uh, uh, second topic. The second topic is uh, unsupervised domain adaptation using the CRISPR discrepancy. Okay, so this topic also will be uh, appeared in the ICRIA this uh, year and uh, CBPR this year. So if you're uh, interested in this topic, uh, please check our papers. 
OK, the goal of the uh, domain adaptation is to transfer the knowledge from the source domain to the target domain and train the classifier that works well on the target domain. Okay? In unsupervised domain adaptation, uh, level examples are given only in the uh, source domain, and uh, there are no level examples in the target domain. Okay? So uh, unsupervised domain adaptation is very, very useful that because uh, we can generate a, a large amount of labeled synthetic images using the simulation. Uh, so if we transfer, if we can transfer the knowledge uh, obtained from the labeled synthetic images uh, to the uh, target domain so in the real world, so we can uh, recognize uh, real world uh, without annotating uh, the real world image. So it's, it's very nice. There are several works uh, in the unsupervised domain adaptation for the deep neural network. Uh, the most, uh, most uh, related work uh, for the, in the unsupervised domain adaptation uses the uh, distribution matching based method. Okay. Um, in the uh, distribution matching method, a uh, feature generator tries to align, tries to align the target distribution uh, to the source uh, distribution while keeping the discriminative property in the source domain, okay, because uh, uh, there are labeled information in the source domain. Uh, then the uh, decision boundary is learned uh, to separate the class distribution uh, in the source domain. So uh, it seems nice, but the, uh, there are some problems of this method. Uh, one problem is the uh, features are aligned just by looking only the feature and the relationship between the decision boundary and the target example is not considered. Uh, the other problem is that uh, this method considers only the whole distribution. Uh, uh, this uh, method doesn't consider uh, the class-specific distribution. So I propose a new method uh, which considers the class-specific distribution and uses a decision boundary to align the distribution. Okay. Uh, this uh, uh, is an illustration of our uh, proposal method. And uh, in the previous works, uh, the feature generator tries to align the whole target distribution to the uh, whole uh, source distribution. On the other hand, we, our method, so we consider the class-specific distribution. Uh, this is uh, a, a source distribution of the class A. Uh, this is a source uh, uh, distribution with the class B. This is a class specific distribution. And the uh, blue uh, 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 circle means the uh, target distribution. Uh, in our method, a uh, feature generator tries to align the target distribution to the class specific distribution. So, uh, how can we do that? How can we do that? The key idea is to maximize the discrepancy by running two classifiers and to minimize discrepancy by running feature generator. And uh, we uh, define that the discrepancy is an example which gets a different prediction from the two different classifiers. Okay? Uh, this is a, a classifier F1, F2, and this is a discrepancy of the uh, two classifiers F1, F2. The first step uh, of our method is to maximize the discrepancy by running a classifier F1 and F2. And uh, uh, cross uh, means uh, cross means the example in the class A of the source domain, and uh, a circle uh, represents the example in the source domain of the class B. Uh, squares, blue squares, uh, represent the example in the target domain. Okay. Then next step is to minimize the discrepancy by running the feature space feature generator. Okay. And uh, this uh, in this step the discrepancies are forced to uh, move to the move into the supports of the uh, two uh, classifiers. Okay, this uh, discrepancy is uh, forced to move to the support of the uh, uh, classifiers. Okay, then a third step is to maximize the discrepancy by running the classifier. This is the uh, same as the first step. Then uh, this is a round classifier F1, and this is a round classifier F1, F2, and uh, this is the discrepancies here. Then a uh, uh, fourth step is to minimize the discrepancy by, by running the feature space. Okay? So the, in this step, is, uh, this step is the uh, same as the second step, and the uh, discre uh, discrepancies are forced to move into the support of the uh, feature, 
uh, uh, classifier uh, supports. Okay, so uh, we uh, repeat this step uh, again and again until convergence. Uh, after the uh, convergence, uh, this uh, target distributions uh, align uh, to the class specific distribution in the source domain. Okay, so uh, this is a, a network, uh, concrete network architecture of the, our method. This is a classifier, classifier F1, F1, and this is a classifier F2. And uh, uh, those classifiers share the same uh, feature generator, Z. Okay? And uh, this classifier, F1, so output the class probability P1, and uh, uh, F2 outputs the class uh, uh, probabilities uh, P2. And uh, uh, this frequency can, uh, is uh, measured by the L1 norm of the uh, cross probabilities P1 and P2. And this is a concrete algorithm of our uh, method. The first uh, step is to fix the uh, generator, to fix uh, this uh, generator Z, and find the classifier F1 and F2 that maximize the discrepancy minus uh, the uh, class, uh, uh, classification loss L1 and L2. Then uh, we find the generator and the two classifiers that minimize the uh, classification loss losses uh, to minimize the classical error on the source domain. Then uh, uh, we fix the classifier F1 and F2 and find the feature generator Z that uh, minimize the discrepancy. Then we uh, repeat this uh, process again and again until the convergence. So I skip this slide so because there's uh, so, uh, okay, so uh, this, uh, uh, this slide shows the fire discrepancy method works well. Uh, so this, uh, uh, the reason why, so uh, reason why the uh, discrepancy method works well uh, can be explained by the theorem uh, proposed by the Ben uh, David in the 2010, uh, but uh, I think there's uh, uh, no time to explain the details, so if you're interested in the reason, uh, so please check uh, our papers uh, in the CDPR. And uh, okay, so uh, we applied the, uh, our method uh, to the classification, object classification uh, problem. And uh, this uh, problem is uh, uh, knowledge transfer from the uh, synthetic image uh, to the uh, uh, real image in the target domain. Uh, those data sets include the uh, uh, 12 uh, classes and uh, this uh, uh, table shows the uh, uh, scores, uh, 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 classification scores, uh, and uh, this is uh, our uh, results, and uh, this is uh, mean classification rate. So uh, those are baseline method and uh, related works. So we can see that uh, our uh, classification performance is uh, better than the, uh, those methods uh, with uh, large margin. Then uh, we apply the, our method uh, to the uh, semantic uh, segmentation problem. And uh, this is uh, also the knowledge transfer from the sim uh, simulated image uh, from the GTA 5. Uh, this is uh, uh, like an image from the game, driving game. And uh, this knowledge uh, to the uh, real image, uh, this uh, image is from the uh, Cityscape uh, famous data set. And uh, yeah. Uh, it is uh, very useful uh, for, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, unsupervised domain adaptation is very, very useful in the semantic segmentation that because it's very hard to annotate the uh, uh, correct data in the image segmentation. So I think, so probably so uh, it takes one hour to correct annotation to the uh, one image in the, uh, from the cityscape. So this is a uh, uh, score. Uh, a comparison uh, to the uh, uh, other method. So we can uh, see that uh, our method uh, uh, get a better performance over the other method, so uh, clearly. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, qualitative uh, results of the semantic segmentation uh, using the, uh, our uh, unsupervised uh, uh, domain adaptation method. And those uh, are the real image. Uh, uh, in the target domain, so there's no level information uh, here. Uh, this is a uh, ground truth, ground truth, uh, uh, which uh, were uh, annotated by the human. There's also uh, uh, results uh, uh, from the uh, source of the method. Uh, this uh, method doesn't uh, adapt uh, the uh, synthesized image to the real image. 
Uh, this is a uh, result from the, uh, our method. This is our adapted method. By comparing uh, this, our results and uh, ground truth, we can see that the, uh, this result is uh, very similar to the ground truth result. The, on the other hand, the source uh, only uh, this uh, segmentation result, the, it looks uh, like uh, messy. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so uh, we can uh, uh, understand, we can observe that uh, our method is uh, clearly uh, better uh, than the source only method. Okay, so uh, in this talk, so uh, we uh, uh, I uh, introduced uh, our recent work uh, to tackle the uh, problem for the uh, running from the uh, limited uh, example. So uh, our top uh, includes uh, two topics. The uh, one topic is uh, between class uh, running. This is a new uh, uh, running uh, method for the supervised uh, setting. Uh, the uh, other topic uh, is uh, unsupervised domain adaptation, which uh, uses the classifier uh, the discrepancy uh, to consider, uh, to align uh, the uh, source distribution to the class-specific distribution uh, in the target domain. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for listening. Uh, sorry, so uh, I'm sorry, so I was upset for this uh, presentation. So, uh, so, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, the similar idea is uh, proposed uh, for the between cross running, so which is called a uh, mixed up, yeah, mixed up, and uh, 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 but the, uh, yeah, almost the same as the mixed up uh, 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 method, uh, but the uh, uh, our method is uh, already has already presented in the ISBRC uh, 2017. Uh, which we took place the uh, uh, January 2017. Uh, however, the uh, mi mix up is uh, uploaded in the archive in probably the October or November in the 2017. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we still have a previous time. Previous time, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, BC learning is sort of a data augmentation, right? Uh, yes, uh, well, yes, one well, aspect is, uh, 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 yeah. Compare the other data augmentation method? Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, this is a, a result of the uh, strong augmentation. We uh, use the uh, a huge variety of the uh, augmentation, and uh, this is uh, without the, uh, the augmentation. So we uh, use the uh, aug strong augmentation to the Ethernet version 2. The uh, classification. Uh, rate, uh, error rate is 21.2. <coughs> then uh, we apply the, uh, our uh, BC learning method to the Ethernet. We got the uh, uh, performance of the 18.2% error rate. So yeah, this error rate is uh, smaller than this one. So yeah, yeah. Uh, BC I learning is. Uh, uh, I remember the last minutes and uh, some uh, session proposed uh, sophisticated data augmentation mm -hmm. uh, with uh, GNN. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So uh, we, we uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, we haven't, yeah. Um, so if I understand correctly, you're mixing in the input space yes. the raw features yeah. that you're getting. One of the premises or the explanations of why these multi-layered networks okay. works well yeah. is that they're developing some kind of internal representation mm -hmm. that captures common sorts of features. Mm -hmm. So have you thought about mixing in a later stage? Mm -hmm. So the you build your network, right? Maybe you train a version one of the network. Mm -hmm. It somehow cap. Maybe you do it via unsupervised learning. That captures some of the intrinsic structure mm -hmm. of the data that you've got. But then you mix mm -hmm. in the feature space of a subsequent layer. Mm -hmm. Now to do that, it's kind of like what used to have to happen with kernel methods. You have to solve the pre-image problem, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because you have to go and sort of work out mm -hmm. what you would have done in the input space mm -hmm. to do the mixing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, class is probably the only one who remembers, right? Yeah, yeah, of you see the similarity? Mm -hmm. Have you thought of something along those lines? Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, so I have uh, tried to mix uh, the feature space in the uh, midterm layers, right. uh, but the, uh, uh, the best uh, results obtained from the mixing at the input space, input 
the image space or the uh, input sound space. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I have to an analyze it. Have you, have you tried for other things like uh, images? And, I mean, because in a way, images can be superimposed and speech also. It's very natural. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think there are lots of data sets out, out there where you can easily do this because it makes no sense and you thought mm -hmm. about other data sources. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, we are now trying to mixing the uh, natural language. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but the, uh, yeah. And, and yeah. yeah, so I have also another, I mean, I mean, your talk was very fascinating, mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, and so the, the second part where you have this um, a discrepancy method, and maybe it's too early for me, so I cannot not, not understand this fully. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, um, and I just I have a feeling that I want you to comment on it, and I wonder why, why you not overfitting or something. Because um, you know, in, in cases where you have mm -hmm. big outliers or problems, mm -hmm. so would your method still work? I don't, I can't judge this. Uh, yes, so the overfit problem. Ah, so <laughs> uh, so so, uh, mm, so yeah, I uh, yeah probably so. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a clear uh, answer. <laughs> Uh, by this uh, method uh, avoid the uh, uh, overfitting. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry for, <laughs> uh, I will consider the, uh, for, uh, the reason why the, uh, this uh, method uh, can avoid the overfitting. So this uh, current so I have no, no idea so why uh, this method can avoid the overfitting. But it does. Yeah, it does, yes, 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 yes. So, so you have you done? I mean, have you done some simulations where you, you know, distort the images badly, you know, uh, something like that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a nice I nice idea. So I I will try. So I, so we are now trying to the open set domain adaptation problem. So yeah. yeah. Because the thing is that you you're going back and forth, and then you're changing the representation. Yes. And, and you wouldn't want to change the representation towards some outliers. Uh, uh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Uh, so that's the, the worry. I mean, it's a bit, to me, it's a bit like boosting, but, but you know, but in a, in a complicated way because you're having the representation thing and the classification thing up. So uh -huh. I cannot judge this very well, but in boosting, it's clear that it overfits. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah that's a good question. The, uh, for in this uh, unsupervised domain adaptation setting, so the, the trick, trick, tr there's one trick, yes. one trick okay. is that. Uh, uh, there's a uh, target domain. Uh, the, uh, the we don't know the class uh, of the uh, example is a target domain, but we know that the in the target domain uh, there is a same class, same only the same class as a source domain. There is no other class uh, than the uh, classes in the source domain. This is a one trick. The uh, the kind of classes are almost same. Uh, uh, between the target domain, the source domain. This is uh, one of the trick. And uh, yeah, in the realistic situation, uh, there is an uh, unknown class in the target domain. Uh, yes. And uh, if we, so uh, you mentioned that if you input the uh, noise in the, into the target domain, so uh, the noise means the unknown class, unknown class. This is a more uh, realistic situation. This problem is called the open set domain adaptation problem. Okay. So. Uh, so we are now so trying to uh, the, uh, uh, apply this uh, method to the uh, open set domain uh, adaptation problem. Then uh, we uh, write a paper and submit the paper to the, some conference. <laughs> so I, uh, probably so I, will, I will ex introduce <laughs> uh, and answer the uh, question to the, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, your question. So I have another question. So uh, in, in, the, in the first part, uh, have you tried to uh, if I understand correctly, uh, during the training for every like, uh, training data, you will randomly sample the mixing ratio, right? Uh, have you tried to pre-build uh, such a data set, like uh, you, you just choose two data uh, uh, for different class and uh, uh, randomly sample the, the, region, uh, the mixing ratio uh, with the same number of the original data set and then try to, to, to see the performance of, of the two class learning? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, would you? Uh, repeat your question. Okay. 
if, if I understand correctly, uh, uh, in your algorithm, uh, during trading, you know, dynamically uh, sample the prison class. Yeah, yes, yeah, another example, yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, have you tried to uh, first uh, first build such a data set mm -hmm. with the same number of the original training, tra training data? Uh -huh. uh, let's see the performance. Mm -hmm. Because I, I guess you are using the submax cross uh, cross entry loss. Mm -hmm. But in, in, uh, there, is, there is one issue in, in that loss. If the time the distribution is one half, mm -hmm. then you cannot know exactly where the margin of the grad class mm -hmm. should be. Mm -hmm. But uh, as long as it's not one half, then uh, uh, you can know the, uh, the correct margin. Mm -hmm. uh, the okay, yeah. okay, sir. I'm so sorry. I, I haven't tried <laughs> to compare the, uh, our method to the uh, the method you mentioned. So, I'm so sorry. I, I've tried <laughs> and I checked uh, what happened. So, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. There's no uh, uh, clear, I have no clear answer to for your uh, oh, question. Okay.